Welcome to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney and Ann Varner. Have you ever had a bad day at work? Well, the Fuck My Work Life podcast is perfect for you. Host J and K share listeners entertaining stories from the workplace, which may have you thinking you don't have it so bad after all. Find Fuck My Work Life on your favorite podcast platform. Welcome to our 100th episode. Woo! Are you a nerd? Are you a person? Then check out Voluntary Input, where we not only have open discussions about tech, TV, movies, and gaming, but also open discussions about people, and sometimes with the people behind the tech. Catch new episodes with me, Leo Allen, bi-weekly on Tuesdays on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Good Pods, and pretty much everywhere else you listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out videos of every episode on YouTube and Twitch. Simply go to voluntaryinput.com to find all the ways you can listen to us, contact us, and better yet, select register as a guest to be a guest on the show because we are always looking for great guests like you. Never forced, never coursed. Welcome to Voluntary Input. Yay! We made it. We made it. We did it. And we overcame the obstacles in front of us. And thank you so much for hanging in there. And I hope that we deliver a great show. We're gonna. So here's the thing. We decided that we weren't going to go in the kitchen <laughs> to bake anything. So what, what we did was we pre-baked um, some favorite recipes. Mm-hmm. And Anne picked both of them, even though she told me the <laughs> one I picked. But it's okay. I think I made a good decision. You made a great decision. Yeah. Yes. The recipe that she baked, that she didn't bake. I didn't bake the one she's baked. Okay. The one that she picked for me, which I baked, (laughs) is a lemon blueberry pie cheesecake bar. Yummy. And they are very good. I had made, I had made these (laughs) a while back. And this was one that she remembered and wanted me to make again. Yeah. I, of course, chose nothing, but she chose the other one to bake. Which are those great brown butter chocolate chip cookies. Which is probably what I would have picked anyway. Right. Because they're They're the best. They're just, they're so Mm. easy to make and everybody loves them. And they come out good. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So if you hear us with what sounds like eating, it's eating. We are actually <laughs> eating. We're eating whilst talking. It's the rudest thing in the world. It's not from clearing our throats constantly. And we're just going to do it because it it's is. our 100th episode and we can eat if we want. To. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. All right. Well, I'm going to start us off. Oh, my God. I'm going to give you an update. Mm-hmm. This was update for ups, epos, episode. <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. Uh, bartender, I'll have another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're drinking bourbon. So this is an update on episode 22. Okay. The Sonia case. Oh, and you're probably going to want to know what the heck I cooked. I know. (laughs) Because it's all about the food. Yes. I'm going to tell you. It's incredible. You're going to love what I picked. Blueberry. No. (laughs) What? It's a recipe that I just made. Yeah. That's why I picked it. Blueberry lemon pie bars. I was like, oh yeah, that recipe. I was wondering how you pulled that out of your butt. I was like, damn, where'd she even get that from? Yeah. I don't know. So in episode 22, I told y'all the story of Dr. Joseph Saunier. He was a pathologist in Texas who was murdered by his girlfriend's ex, Dr. Thomas Michael Dixon. He was a plastic surgery, surgery, a he plastic, was a plastic surgery, surgery, <laughs> another word for a book. I know, my God, oh my gosh, it's really we, are really not, <laughs> we are filling up that sugar coated vernacular. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> hey, copyright. <laughs> so this is a plastic surgeon. He lives in Amarillo, Texas. Now he got another guy named Dave Shepard to do the dirty work. Mm. Shepard is the one who actually did the killing. 
Right. Dixon planned and paid for the murder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shepard had agreed to a deal with prosecutors when he went to trial. So he didn't get the death penalty, but that was only if he testified against Dixon at trial. Right, right. And then Shepard ended up getting on the stand and changing his mind. Yes. And oh, he I remember didn't, this one. Yeah, he didn't tell the he didn't tell the truth. He didn't tell the, so the that, version that was agreed upon. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so that trial was declared a mistrial. At the second trial, Dixon, no, not Dixon, mm-hmm. but Shepard told the truth. And more importantly, his daughter Haley testified at that trial. Oh. Dixon was found guilty of two counts of capital murder. All right. Count one was the murder was committed for money or that money had been paid for the murder. And then count two was because the murder was committed during a burglary. Yeah. An appeals court acquitted Dixon on the murder burglary charge. In January of 2020, an appeals court reversed the murder for hire convicted an appeals court mm. acquitted Dixon of the murder burglary. OK, so anyway, it looks like he's out they actually released Dixon. Him. Dixon, they released him from jail on a $2 million bond. By April of 2020, that bond was revoked because they decided to go back to trial. Okay. Or in a, a higher court decided the ruling of, from the lower court was, was not correct. Okay. So they ended getting Dixon back in jail. His attorneys appealed his conviction on 50 issues. 50. That's a lot, but I guess really it's not that much when you think about how many issues they throw everything at the wall. See, if any any one thing sticks, then they're good. Yeah. Well, that's not true, but you know what I'm saying. I was being dramatic. (laughs) Well, just one noodle is not dramatic. (laughs) you got to come up with like 30 noodles. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) So here we go. On January 13th, 2022, the Seventh Court of Appeals overruled all but two of the issues and upheld the capital murder conviction. That's beautiful. His sentence is for life without parole, so he'll mm-hmm. be hanging out in prison for a while. Hmm. I was thinking, since he's going to be there for such a long time, maybe mm-hmm. he could help do some some surgery, some plastic surgery on any prisoner who might need it. It depends on why they want it. Right. And maybe he could even be like a Dr. Pimple Popper. Oh, God, please. No, I'm eating cheesecake bars. (laughs) So that was my first update. What you got? All right. So we're going to go back to episode 11. Wow. Wow. That was like before we even had a nicer microphone. Yeah. I mean, we still didn't have any sense. I think episode 11, we were like, Oh my God, we have to do an episode 11? Like, <laughs> it's not over after episode 10? Like, people are actually listening to us? Right. Like, more than just our family who, by the way, doesn't listen anyway. So, I mean, I don't know. And then this is what I came up with. It was a doozy, though. Oh, let's hear her up. And I like an update. Okay. FYI, I made sweet potato biscuits. Oh, yeah, I remember. Those were really and good. And our really yummy friend. Our <laughs> yummy friend. Yummy, but yummy. <laughs> Um, brought us some ham, country ham from Virginia. Oh gosh! And you fried that ham up in some butter. I did. And we put it, slapped it right on these sweet tater biscuits. We did. Then we did like them. We did enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Now I wouldn't say that was a total success because my biscuits are flat. They were flat, yes. But once you get butter and ham on them, you can't. It yeah. doesn't matter. You can sandwich them together like two on yeah. a sandwich, <laughs> like it's like fun. a double decker. Yeah, like a double decker. <laughs> Anyway, so that's what I made, but that was a fun, it was fun. That was a fun recipe. So, all right. Episode 11 takes place in Alaska. Alaska. Yes. Back, back in 1993, Sergi, Sergi, <laughs> it's not, it's Sophie Sergi. Oh, if you'll let go of not moving. Well, I can just rub it. Okay. That's fine. Sophie Sergi. We're talking about trout, by the way, not <laughs> some other guy. <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> So this murder takes place in Alaska in 1993. And I'll just give you a a quick synopsis. Sophie Sergi had gone to the University of Fairbanks to visit some friends. Okay. While she was visiting, the girl that she was visiting decided to spend the night with her boyfriend. And so she was on a different floor than her room. And Sergi stayed there by herself. Oh, gosh. And the next day, Sergi was found 
in, oh, right. in, in a bathtub, in bathtub tub, right. on a different floor, still in that dorm. And mm. she had been raped, strangled, stabbed, and shot in the eye. Like oh things were things went to hell in a handbasket. It was late April, so students were leaving already for the Spring, summer. Oh, right. Oh, summer. Yeah, they were done. They were leaving for the summer. So they didn't get to really be in touch with a lot of the students that were in there. Oh, gosh, that would make a murder investigation impossible. It was nearly impossible. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until 2018 Mm -mm. that they actually solved the case. Stephen Downs was linked to the murder through hit through the DNA profile of a relative that uploaded her stuff onto an ancestry Oh, I love it. I love it. Yep. Um, he had gone back to his hometown in Maine in 93 and never went back to school. Wow. Can you get any further away from Alaska? Right. But during the interviews with other people, because they knew that she had been shot. So, mm-hmm. and normally in a dorm, you wouldn't think of people having guns. So they would ask students, do you know of anybody in, that lived in the dorm that, you know, was known to carry guns or had guns or had a fascination? And they're like, oh, such and such. Stephen Downs. He had a gun. He always had a gun. Right. Like he always showed off his gun and stuff and kept it in his room. So they were like, okay, well, that he's suspicious. <laughs> and then the fact that, that he that he didn't come back after he was not, he didn't graduate. He just stopped going to school. Oh, right. He gave up. He so was that like, was a little suspicious. And they kept calling him to have him come back for interviews and he wouldn't, he wouldn't talk to the police. Oh, so he's like, he no, was on I'm their radar, right? Whatever happened in Alaska is going to just stay right in Alaska. <laughs> That's right. Because what happens in Alaska stays in Alaska. Yes. In 2019, he was finally arrested, but because he fought the extradition process Mm -hmm. he ended up staying in maine oh not so he was in jail but he was not in jail in alaska no okay and then in that's kind of where we left it he was still in jail Mm -hmm. awaiting trial so in january 2020 the trial finally got underway downs did not testify but the jury found stephen downs who was 47 years old guilty of sexual assault and murder so they didn't even like he didn't even take a deal or anything i don't think a deal was offered nice yeah i don't think a deal was off once they got that dna profile they're like we're good to go yeah we're we don't need to offer a deal mm-hmm. we don't need to offer anything so his sentencing is set for september of 2022 oh, okay i think it's, it's probably been delayed because of covid that's what i think or i could have gotten the date of the trial wrong <laughs> I mean, I don't really know because the bourbon is really like, hmm. So anyway, I wrote down here that he's from Auburn, Maine, if anybody gives a shit, but I don't think you do. And um, what I'm trying to say is he was found guilty and he's awaiting sentencing and he's in jail awaiting it. There you go. There's my update. So I wonder if he's in jail in Alaska now. Yes, he is in Alaska. Okay. You know, they they probably don't have a lot of room in Alaska. So that's why he was able to see in Maine. No, he Maybe. fought the extradition. No, he said you don't have enough. You don't have enough. The the lawyers were able to say oh. you don't have enough to arrest me, so I'm not going. Gotcha. Right. All right. Good update. Thank you. Very good. I'm gonna eat now. Okay. So the next episode I did an update on is episode number 39. And I made me mama's tea cakes mm. because they're just the best ever. Oh, me mama. R.I.P. R.I.P. Mm. They're like a not overly sweet sugar cookie, but it's it's seasoned with nutmeg. nutmeg. That is the mm. yeah, and then you sprinkle a little nutmeg sugar on top, and it really is it's delightful. delightful, especially with a cup of tea. I gotta tell you, next time I get to pick something for you to make from the yesteryears, oh, I'll my pick that one. tea cakes, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll do it. I know you will. So in episode 39, I spoke about the brutal murder of Kristen Hudgens, a 22-year-old art student um, who had graduated and been commissioned to paint a mural Mm. at the Trenton Club in New Jersey. Yes. Kristen left home to start her new job, but she never came home. Instead, she was raped and murdered by a serial rapist named Ambrose Harris. Ambrose It was three brave teenagers and one fake psychic that broke the case. The teenagers were the nephews of Ambrose Harris, who risked Harris, 
who risked their lives to come forward and tell police that they had been in Kristen's car with their uncle and their uncle had confessed to them that he had carjacked the car and murdered the owner, Kristen. What a jerk. The psychic was a woman named Gloria Dunn. She told police that she had a psychic vision and led them to her, to Kristen's grave. Mm -hmm. Gloria was not a psychic. She was an accomplice in Kristen's murder and had been present when Kristen was raped and murdered. She was trying to get the $25,000 reward money that Kristen's parents had put up in the hopes of getting information about their daughter. So it's not enough that you murdered our kid. And buried her in a shallow grave and raped and, and then probably her. tortured her. Right. And stole her car. Stole her car and left her. Now you're going to come after our money. Right. Because what you took wasn't enough. Exactly. Jackass. She needs to be. Well, she was sentenced to 30 years for her role in the murder. Okay. And she's serving her time in prison in Trenton, New Jersey. Well, I'm just saying, I don't know how long 30 <laughs> years is. I mean, I know how long 30 <laughs> years is. <laughs> She no longer can no, we don't know this. We don't I know can't that know means. that anymore. Well, this one's gonna really blow your mind because Ambrose Harris was sentenced to, do, to two life terms plus 65 years. So do that math, 65 years. Oh, it turns yeah. out he was it, it actually uh, the information that had been <laughs> I'm doing the attic machine in the air. Please don't, please don't. I don't know why an attic machine says that. It's more like a, a calculators no because i remember it used, used to be we had machine. one so old that you couldn't press the no you, total button you had to pull this little lever yes. <laughs> you tried to number in and then you pull, pull the it thing. and it stamps it on the yes. thing oh my god oh my god <laughs> oh well it turns god. out in my original story i got it wrong the man had been sentenced to death i just didn't realize <laughs> I must have missed that article somewhere. Mm. And while he was on death row, Ambrose actually murdered another inmate by stomping him to death. God, that's awful. Yes. Yes, indeed. So he got more time. I don't know how you get more time put on. T- well, I guess in case they get rid of the death penalty. Yeah, but even if they get rid of it, it's it, it, whatever. whatever. It's Texas. They, they're they not getting rid They'll of it in Texas. It. Maybe they're that guy bumped him up to the front of the line. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, no need. I'm happy to report that Ambrose <laughs> Harris died. <laughs> you could have left with that in, in, in an undisclosed manner. That's how the report read in undisclosed manner. So uh, we don't really know what happened to Ambrose, but he is no and longer. And we really don't care. He's we just no am glad that he no longer breathes this earth air. Yes. A retired deputy police chief from Trenton said that Harris was the most evil person he ever oh. encountered in his 32 years of service. Now that says a lot. He said he felt confident that there was an elevator going in the down direction waiting mm-hmm. for Ambrose Harris when he died. And that's how we're doing in Texas. That's right. That's my update. What you got? Mm, I forgot I got one. Oh, we're going to episode 32. All right. FYI, I made apple cider donuts. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I and remember. I feel like they were good. I'm sure they were. Mm-hmm. I covered the Folly Beach serial killer. Oh, spooky. Richard Valenti. He had been convicted of double homicide of Sherry Clark, who was 14, and Alexis Latimer, who was 13. He got two life sentences, two life sentences, but concurrent. Mm. And Come after on, South Carolina, get it together. After, I don't know, I think five years after the first five years, he started coming up for parole and mm-hmm. he was up for parole every year for a long time. And then finally the parole board said, don't come back for two years. Wow. And then he started going every two years, but he, thank God he was never given parole. He was denied, 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 denied. <laughs> And but torture for the poor family that has to show up. Oh, it was for horrible. It was horrible. The parole hearings every time. Yes. Um, so in October of 2020, he was denied parole for the 21st time. All right. That but that's how many times those victims' families had to go 21 show up. Twenty one times or 20, 21. 20. It was all 20 of 21. It was the it was the 21st time he had been wow. denied. That was in October. And then in December, that mf I didn't say the bad word. 
It could say, it could mean mayonnaise fudger. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> so mama don't call fudger. me. This mayonnaise fudger did us <laughs> a big old favor and died. Woo, another elevated going down. That's right. Age 77. It was not COVID related. So I hope he died of some. Uh, an undisclosed manner. <laughs> I hope it was like, I don't know, the gonorrhea or something. Oh, yeah. I'm like sure that's something that's painful. Like, and, yeah. Some sort of pox. A pox I want a pox sort. upon his genitalia. Yeah. That's pox. what I want. <laughs> so that is my next update. All right. So the next update for me is episode 90. I wow, made done 90. I made the almond crescent cookies. So oh, for mama. Time. Yeah. 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 In episode 90, I shared the story of Abraham Shakespeare, who won a $30 million jackpot in the Florida lottery. He banked a cool $16.9 million. Abraham was generous with his winnings, but he grew tired quickly of everyone asking him for money. I get it. He was thrilled when a woman named Dee Dee Moore approached him about a project she was working on. She said she wanted to write a book about him. Mm. And she ended up offering to help Abraham manage his money, which is helpful. Abraham could not read or write. So Mm -hmm. I feel like he looked to people to maybe give him guidance and help. And that's what Dee Dee Moore said she would do. She ended up stealing all of Abraham's assets and she murdered him. What a biatch. No book, no money management. No. When his family tried to find him, she hired someone to call Abraham's mother and pretend to be Abraham. Of course, his mom knew the person calling was her her son. And then she had somebody or she wrote a letter pretending she was Abraham and she sent the mother a letter in the mail and the mother gets the letter and immediately calls police because she says... My son did not write this letter. And they say, how do you know? Because the boy couldn't read or write. No. So why would you write a letter? Well, D.D. Dumb. D.D. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then she had the nerve to bury his body on, on one of his properties under a concrete slab that she had stolen from him. What yeah, the slab sure. of the property? She stole a slab? <laughs> I said, not the you slab stealing you. <laughs> she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Good, so she can sit the F down and, and shut up. And she's serving her time in a correctional facility in Ocala, Florida. Oh, well, Dee- we should just go see her. I don't want to. Hello, Dee- the duh. The duh. <laughs> You're the dumb. The duh was in the news recently. She did an interview about a bill that's waiting for the governor's signature in Florida that would make it so lottery winners in that state will no longer have to disclose their names publicly as winners. Mm. Diddy told a reporter that she supports the bill because lottery rent winners in Florida are forced to put their, put their names out, lives at risk what? when their names are mentioned in winning jackpots. <laughs> so she's pretty much blaming the state of Florida for what she did. Right. That's my side. In fact, Shut the freaking hell up. It's my <laughs> she whole in side. fact said that it puts a target on the winner's back. The proposed bill in Florida wouldn't give the winner of $250,000 for more total anonymity. It would only keep their names out of the public eye for 90 days, but it would at least give them time to establish some kind of a secure environment for themselves. <sighs> Of course, the winners do have the option of going public immediately if they so choose. Dee Dee said she wishes that the term for anonymity would be for six months. I personally feel all lottery winners should be allowed to remain anonymous. <laughs> 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 I, I, don't, I don't see the point of forcing them to disclose their financial win. And I don't remember one single solitary person who's been on the news that has ever won a lottery. Like, I don't remember... Like, I'll see it on the news or in the paper or You'll whatever. You'll see it on the and national then, news because our state doesn't put them on the news. But, like, I know Michigan does. But our state puts them in the paper. I guess they don't put them on national news. I, I guess they I don't know. care when South Kakalakians win a lottery. But they put them on local news. It doesn't just have to be national. It's even right. local. But they're on local news here. Lottery winners. They are? <laughs> I don't watch no local yeah, news. see, so we don't even know. <laughs> so what's the point of making the lottery winners come forward? Like, all I care about is somebody won it. I don't want to see the people. I don't that need want to it. see what they look like. That's just gonna make me mad. All right. <laughs> so why <laughs> even put them in the? In, why even put them out there? I agree. I completely agree. Thank I think you. it makes them a target. Hence Abraham. Yo, 
you and I are going to go to blows. But she's talking to Trout, not me. <laughs> That is so true. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, I have an update. Okay. Breaking news. It's like you're playing the young. <laughs> okay. This was episode 44. This can be a really quick update. It's a quickie. Oh. But what I made was very vanilla cupcakes. Oh, yeah. So were, it was for your boy's birthday. It was. They were so good. Yes. And they were yummy. Indeed. So I covered the disappearance and murder of Alyssa Turney. Oh, right, right. So I remember. Yeah. So on the last day of, of high school for her, she mm. was a senior, last day, May 2001. <laughs> Um, Alyssa attorney didn't come home from school. Mm. She disappeared. She just disappeared. Her I sister, hate it when that happens. Me too. Her sister, Sarah, was 12 years old at the time. As she got older, Sarah suspected that her dad had something to do with the disappearance of her sister. How horrifying. How horrifying. And, she, and this is the man that raised her. Mm-hmm. She started up. She actually started a podcast and took to TikTok. She's good at TikTok. We suck at it. (laughs) And she wrote a blog. She made posts on her blog and on TikTok. I remember seeing this one saying that were titled five reasons why I know my father killed Alyssa. Wow. She didn't give up. She just was just so focused on finding the truth about her sister. And finally, she got the attention of investigators and the local DA. And they said, okay, we're going to take another look at your dad's case and he by the way had been in jail for like arson and passing bad checks or something oh wow finally in 2020 her dad was indicted on the murder charge of Alyssa, Mm. and the trial was supposed to begin in 2021 Mm. it hasn't yet it is i saw like a blurb come across my one of my notifications one day that said that the it was going to happen like in March or spring of 2022. I still haven't heard anything about it. So I do follow Alyssa. Nope. I don't follow her. Well, spring doesn't officially start until the 22nd of April, right? No, 22nd, 20. It's the 20th of March. Oh yeah. So we're in spring. Late. Anyway, Sarah Turney has an incredible podcast called Voices for Justice. She's on all of your listening apps. She's on Instagram. And I think she's on Twitter, but I follow her on Instagram. And she has asked people that when the trial does start to respect her privacy, Mm, she has to go testify Mm. in that trial. So, um, yeah, yeah, because if she didn't do all the work she did, there wouldn't be a trial. Right. And she doesn't want people asking her every day what happened in court, what happened in court. Like that, she doesn't need that. This is this is serious. Well, sure. It's It's very heavy. A lot of trauma for her. Yeah. Do yourselves a favor. Go listen to her Justice for Voices. No, no, <laughs> no, no. It's the it's other not way around. Voices. I'm so sorry. It's Voices for Justice, and she um, now she is very dedicated to covering missing persons cases that haven't been solved and helping the families of those cases, which is amazing. That is amazing. She actually raises money either through through her own pocket or fundraising. I'm not sure, but she has been able to afford to put like two billboards up for some missing kids Oh, nice! in their town. So, you know, I just, she, she does really great work and she's worth following and and listening to. Do it. Follow her. Listen. Yeah. But don't forget about us. Oh yeah. And And come back to us. Yeah. And tell her we sent you. (laughs) Not that she gives a crap. She doesn't know who we are. No. So she's way bigger than us. You know, those two old broads from sugar coated murder. Yeah. Them, them Southern chicks that just like, (laughs) Eat bacon, and drink. Eat and drink. <laughs> Them drunkards. <laughs> All right. So I'm going back to episode 23. Okay. I made butter cheese wafers. Do you remember that? Oh, oh Lord. They are delicious. Perfect with the Bloody Mary. They really are. And we got it from a dear, dear friend of ours from our hometown. Mm-hmm. And we're just so blessed that she even shared it with us. Yes. So in this episode... I talk about the murder of Jim Melger. He and his wife, Sandy, had been celebrating their anniversary with a couple's bath in their big jacuzzi tub. Couple's bath. (laughs) Um, The dogs, that they they had little dogs. Uh They started barking. 
So Jim goes to see what's happening. Sandy enjoys her time and gets out of the tub, goes into her closet, which I'm assuming is like a big closet, you know, in the bathroom, sits in a chair and starts putting on lotion, which is her normal routine. And then her world turned black. When she wakes up, she's tied behind her arms and legs are tied. No, her <laughs> arms are tied behind her back and her legs are bound. <laughs> You're like, go through the slideshow. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, not that one. <laughs> her brother-in-law actually found her and then they found Jim. Jim was found naked, beaten and stabbed to death in the master bedroom closet. Mm. He is covered in self-defense wounds in defense covered in gosh <laughs> have some more I'm, some hmm. I'm getting a little low oh no <laughs> you really are low you have to do something about that anyway he's covered in defensive wounds and has been stabbed 31 times after police do their investigation they decide it was sandy who killed her husband despite the fact that sandy has no wounds no blood on her body and the fact that she had been tied up And she was laying in a closet with the door shut and a chair up against it on the outside of the door. So how the heck did she do that? Sandy suffered from hypothyroidism, epilepsy, and lupus. She had had hip replacement surgery. So she was not, you know, maybe as spry as she had been before. Oh, right. Spryness is (laughs) spryness is I guess I say that because it just doesn't make sense that she would be able to stab this man 31 times and not get one single wound. Like he didn't get a shot in not even a blood. Nothing. 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 And she was found tied up with her hands (laughs) behind her back. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something. If somebody did that for me, I, to me, I'd be crying because my shoulders hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think they're going to be able to get it done. I'm going to be like, you all need a bigger rope because oh, I, can't, yeah. I can't get them back no, there anymore. You have to have a bigger rope. Y'all got to go get a bigger rope. <laughs> I'm going to do some escaping while you So you're eventually gone. the case does go to trial and a jury finds Sandy guilty of murder. She's sentenced to 27 years in prison. I first heard about the case from a podcast called Truth and Justice hosted by Bob Ruff. Mm-hmm. About a month ago, we got an email. We got an email. We got an email. I love an email. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going I'm to tell you. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you. Let me just tell you something. Tell me something good. good. Ah. The subject of the email is episode number 23, <gasps> Melbourne Case Update. I love it I when, we get, you when not. we get people that, that have a specific episode that they talk about and they know something yes. that we don't know. Yes. That's so exciting. It's so exciting. And I will tell you who sent it because that's not for me to say, but I will read the message. Okay. Okay. You ready? <gasps> yes. <sighs> Hi, ladies. I'm a member of the Truth and Justice Army and a supporter of Sandy Melger. Total honesty. I've only listened to your current episode and the Melger one, it's which fine. is perfectly it's fine, fine with us. We're okay. I was scrolling back to the beginning to listen after I saw your sad post in one of the true crime <laughs> Facebook groups I belong to. <laughs> and the name Melger jumped out at me. Having helped investigate on that one, helped investigate on that one. I love it. And befriending Sandy and Liz, the daughter, I wanted to listen to your take on it. I was pleasantly surprised to hear you mention Bob and Truth and Justice. I first met Bob during the first season. Um, Adnan Syed. Yeah, I know know who you're talking about. I I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know that case. And then he came to Dallas to start investigating his second case in Tyler, Texas. Bob is a great guy who really wants to help the wrongfully convicted. Now, on to the Melger update. Mm -hmm. So during the Truth and Justice season, the prosecutor, Colleen Barnett, and one of the blood experts were making fun of Liz, who is the daughter. Oh, that really stews my tomatoes. Right, the Melger's daughter. Uh, They were making fun of her on Twitter. 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 They were twits. For saying blood splatter, because apparently everyone is supposed to know that it's actually blood spatter. Yeah, well, we didn't all take CSI crime scene forensics investigation classes. Exactly. And hello, grow up. You're a prosecutor for that. There's that. You're a no. 
She's a prosecutor. She is a prosecutor. Yes. I'm just calling her a prosecutor right now because that's in our <laughs> book. Exactly. In our book of terms. They're making fun of the way she said blood spatter. And people on Twitter start attacking them. Good. The blood expert. The and splatter. The biatches. prosecutor. Right. And they start attacking them. And she comes back. She the prosecutor, Colleen Barnett, comes back and said, if you're so sure she's innocent, why not get Kathleen Zellner on the case? LOL. Well, she tagged Kathleen Zellner on the case. And Miss Zellner comes back and says, I would love to look into the case. Who's, it's so refreshing. I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to tell you. It's so refreshing to see a prosecutor willing to have me look at the case. And, <laughs> I don't think that that's what and she that is. is how Kathleen Zellner became Sandra Melger's attorney. Oh, that's so fun. We're waiting to hear from the judges on the last appeal. They've been out with the case for over two years now. We're hoping for a decision in her favor soon. Wow. We'll have to say some prayers. All right. So let me tell you who Kathleen Zellner is. She was the subject of the... 2015 and 2018 Netflix series called Making a Murderer. Nice. Well, she wasn't. She was <laughs> she wasn't about her. It was no. about her clients, but she represented the clients in those okay things. So, and she's just she actually is currently representing Johnny Depp and his defamation oh. trial against Amber Heard. So nice. she's a very famous, well-known, well-respected attorney. And, and I could not be more thrilled that lady. she is Sandy. Melger's attorney. I love it. The email continues. I did notice a mistake in your telling of the story oh. that has been so common in this case. Melger's, you're fired. Darn it. <laughs> well, if I only got one thing wrong in the case, I think you did. Okay. I think I did pretty darn good. You should probably be on the I'm prosecution at, table. And no, the last the one, table. and the last one, I missed that he got the death penalty. Yeah, so that was kind of big. <laughs> this, this correction is actually you know not we bad. never we always said we talked about murder. We never said we told the truth. <laughs> I tried to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. What I'm saying is we may not, we talk about it, but it may not be as factual as it could be. Right. So anyway, the Melker's house was only one story. There's no upstairs, no basement, just one floor. That's easy to get. Yes. So I guess Bob has another podcast called True Crime Binge. If anybody wants to go and listen to his new. We might have to listen to him. New thing to do. And that is my episode. I love it when we get. Emails yeah. from our listeners. Me even, too. Even if you only listen to one or two episodes. And even if you're saying, hey, you got one thing wrong. You got something wrong. I mean, even if you say, I listened, you're not really my cup of tea, <laughs> but I'm going to stick with it as long as I can. I mean, thank you. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. You're not your cup of tea. Because yeah. I, I know there's some people that um, I know where my son works. He he has a, a manager that listen, has listened That's to so some of our episodes. And it's not his cup of tea because he likes a more serious mm. true crime podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Some so, people don't. They, he, they want serious and we don't know how to do that. We don't do that. Right. We don't even know how. We couldn't do it if we tried. No, and it and then when we do it, people think it's very sad, but also very funny. So, <laughs> so somehow we can't not we can't get funny. it right. No, no. This is very serious. Very serious, y'all. I'm being very sorry. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, that was my last update. So you need to keep uh, them coming. I only have two. Okay. I only have two. Well, more. we agreed that we'd each do four. But one. But this I think one... you'd be overzealous if you do more. <laughs> no, no, no. I just have a lot to talk about. <laughs> okay. Here's the ironical part. Okay. I also went back to episode 39 where you made me mama's tea cakes. Oh, neat. Yes. Yeah, so that must episode. have been a, a wham dinger. A wham dinger of an episode. <laughs> of an episode. So episode 39 is the one I picked. Nice. How ironical. <laughs> I talked about the Eastburn murders. They happened in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And a mom had been raped and she and her two little girls had been stabbed to death. Unbelievable. While the husband slash father was away in a different state in military training. So let's just tell you right up front. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. No. This dude named Tim Hennis. Hennis. He's the one that that actually actually did it. But he went on trial. He was convicted. That was then overturned. And they and and then he went back to trial and they found him innocent. Oh, yeah. And then 
he couldn't be charged with double jeopardy. Oh, right. Gosh, um, it. And so, so right. after he had been found innocent, DNA technology caught up and the DNA from the mom's vaginal swabs had been <laughs> tested. And he actually was the only person that contributed to that DNA. Hello, you dumbass. So he couldn't be tried in just a normal court of law because he had already been tried and found innocent. So that's double jeopardy. Because he was in the military, the military was able to pull him out of retirement and then take him to military court and charge him in military court. I because, love that. Yes, because he at the time was in the military. Love it. And they found him El Gildio on all counts. Because you can be tried in military court for something that you've been tried in. Civilian court. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So he sits, he sits on death row at the military death row in Leavenworth prison in Kansas. Oh, Lord. I know. Crazy. So here's the deal. He's on death row. He cannot be executed without presidential approval (gasps) because that's what it takes to be executed on military death row is presidential Uh, approval. Right, right. The last time that a president approved somebody to be executed was in 1961. Wow. So I don't know that it's going to happen for this dude. Well, that's right. Just let him sit behind bars in a box. Yeah. So still no execution date. And he is one of only four people that sit on the military death row in the United States. Mm. There's only four of them. So I guess they get the whole prison to themselves. I don't know what happens, (laughs) but I'm hoping that military prison is not as Leavenworth. Did you say it was in Leavenworth? Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping that's not, um, I I just don't want it to be some type of a country club play. I want it to be hard. I want him to have hard, not life. Hard, not life. life. (laughs) Hard, not life. (laughs) A virus, <laughs> you've got a you got hard not life. <laughs> I can tell from your face, you got hard not life. <laughs> you nasty. <laughs> well, you need a pill for that hard not life. <laughs> All right, so I have one more. All right, one more to talk about. It was a bonus episode that we released um, during the Christmas break. Oh, right, right. This is one that we had put on our on our on the back burner, so to speak. It was a short episode. You, Sugar, oh. made gingerbread cheesecake <gasps> dough. Oh, my God. Wasn't that delicious? Yes, it was super yummy. It was we, really it was good. Really yummy. Great for a Christmas party. Perfect. Should you be invited. Or if you're just having your own party with your own self. Exactly. Because <laughs> you're worth a dip. And you are worth a dip. You're worth a damn dip. We all need t-shirts that say that. <laughs> you are I, worth a dip. Yes. You are worth a dip and I am worth a dip. <laughs> So, anywho, this was about John and Michelle Stevens. They were in Florida, and they were murdered by a, a guy. I want to call him a kid, but he was 19, named Austin Haruf or Haralf or Haruf uh-huh. Austin. He's also known as the frat boy cannibal. Oh, right. He was the one that had... Um, Taking chunks out the, of the guy. Was it the uh, bat? Did he have bat? Did he? Eat bat? No, no, he was just no, crazy. No, he had a schizophrenic oh, break. God. Yeah, and thought that he was a wolf man. Oh no. Yeah. God, I hate when that happens. Oh, it was really horrible. And so, um, I just wanted to let you know he's still in jail. He's not gone to trial yet. He still is treated for schizophrenia. He does not leave his cell without being double escorted and double chained. Like he's like, seriously, they he's watch him at stuff. all times, but he's, he's all, his schizophrenia is being managed. That's a good word. Thank managed. You. Thank you. With, with some medication. Right. So that's good. And I remember this was like controversial oh, because gosh. he was a normal kid. He hadn't had any, he didn't have a record, no problems mm-hmm. in the past. And then one night he just lost yeah. it. He had been losing it for a while. His parents weren't paying attention. Right. Not that I'm blaming the parents, but they just didn't catch it. Right. And they didn't catch what was happening. Life and you don't see what's happening right in and front he, of you. They were separated or divorced. And then he, oh, he so kind of went back going, behind. Right. Back between the houses. They're and, in survival mode at that point. Well, and then and then he he had a friend who like completely stopped seeing him because he was talking oh, scary. Remember? Gotcha. And the daughter came back and said, I don't, I have to sleep with my door closed because I'm so scared of my brother. Oh, no. Yeah. Cause she said, I, I feel like he, something's either possessed him or he is, he's gone off his rocker. Right. So anyway, he, um, his trial again was supposed to start in spring of 22. 
Oh. I hate seeing nothing about it. Three twenty two should be very active. I know, and <laughs> and yet we got crickets. Nothing. Yeah. So um, I'm going to keep looking. I have not been able to find it on any of the dockets at well, all. Please anywhere. feel free to break right into whatever story we're telling. Next I will. Time if you, if you and I'll anything. say beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> Breaking news. Beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> Please, please. I'll I will. I will. I'll just break it. out in my beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Do you know, um, let's see, that, the Florida case, what did we make for that one? Oh, oh right. the gingerbread dip. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's all the updates I have. A hundred episodes, y'all. A hundred episodes. Woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> and can you believe on our 100th 100 episode, our fancy new mics that we just know, bought they come stopped right working. out so this is the 300th recording of our 100th episode <laughs> <laughs> but we're so happy to finally get it out to you guys y'all have been so patient yeah we really appreciate it thanks and, for hanging in there y'all are encouraging us to keep, keep going emails keep going. coming yeah keep talking to us that really helps because we're lonely oh and if so you want to buy us a coffee buy us a coffee oh my gosh just go right ahead just do it if yeah. you want to buy some killer vanilla just buy some killer vanilla. Just do it. If you oh, want to buy new merchandise, because we've got some new merchandise oh, yeah, rolling around out there. Hats. we got baseball hats mm-hmm. now. And um, I posted what well, we've got some new shirt designs coming out. And I posted um, the, this might not be bourbon. Oh, right. Like, no, this might be bourbon. This might be bourbon. That whole series, we've got a coffee mug, a tall water bottle, and then a like a to go I don't know what that is, like a metal to go cup. Oh, thing. like a coffee cup. Kind yeah, of. like a to go coffee cup. So a tumbler, a I, mini tumbler. I feel like a it's, a, it's a stainless steel tumbler. Yes. Way to go, Shaw. Thank you. So anyway, if y'all feel like getting that and sporting some merch, then just go right ahead. That's, we won't stop you. We won't stop you. But have we, trouble you know finding what we'll it. Do, what we'll when do. we put this episode out, we'll post the link. Yeah. Our link tree, and that will give you, you access to everything. Everything you need. But if you still cannot find it, please email us and we will help you out. Oh, but for the kill of vanilla, you need to email us because then we'll send you an invoice. Yes, we will. And, and then, then we'll, we'll get send it shipped you some out. We just made a, ship it, a shipment the other day. Yes, we did on Friday, I think. I think we've actually got four bottles in this batch. So if you yeah, want them, you so, better come yeah. on and get them. Four bottles left in this batch. I don't, know why doing I don't think anybody can see that but y'all i'm doing the slap your legs clap your hands snap your fingers that's what i'm doing everybody do it with me snack your legs clap your hands snap your fingers whoa, whoa, love right. it right i don't know why i started doing I don't that either but we'll do it we're just gonna do we'll it just do it all right guys well that's stay. it that's it stay who you are stay who you are how about stay sweet I couldn't remember stay it stay sweet and don't murder because if you kill people we will talk about you that is a guarantee guarantee and we're probably not going to get your name right oh that's so true oh wait don't forget social media oh, we've got social media we do we do we've got yeah, the Twitter. email oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> email murder dot sugarcoated at gmail.com twitter at sugar murder <laughs> what else do you need to know facebook well, you could do facebook we got a fan page look us up sugarcoated murder podcast fan page instagram at sugarcoated murder yay okay come find us yes we miss you no we, we love, love you, you. <laughs> well we do miss you because we've never seen you it's true all okay, right bye y'all bye This has been Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a deliciously entertaining true crime podcast. Like what you heard? You can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook fan page and share with friends. Thanks for listening to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast.